and welcome to the Giricast, the Malaga fan podcast for all the Giris out there and as part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. I'm Nick Bell, your host for this evening, as we are going to preview Malaga's short trip up the road to Cordoba, our fellow promotion achievers, would that be the word? And to look ahead to that game with me, I'm joined by the wonderful Luke Chambers and Chris Marquez. How are you guys? Yeah, very well, mate. How are you? Not doing too bad. I've just regaled you with the short incident where an Amazon driver has decided to crash into my garage. But, you know, less said about that, the the, the better. So, uh, the most important well, question, Nick, did your package arrive on time? Wasn't even my parcel. That wasn't even my parcel. That's the, that's the that's worst the thing. Bit, yeah. <laughs> that's the worst bit. And uh, Chris Marquez with a lovely vista behind him, fresh from uh, his, his new house, his new casa, as Matt yeah. put it the other day. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, helicopters are flying over. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sure they've got busy places to be and things yeah. like that. But um, yeah, well, like I said, we're going to be previewing the uh, quarter of a game ahead of this weekend. Obviously, you know, the, the club has been bouncing this week after that result against Albacete on the weekend. There's been a, a little bit of news, but not great news, if I'm being perfectly honest with to start with. Um, just on the injuries, guys, we've had two confirmed injuries this week to add to our ever-growing injury list. Uh, Victor Garcia, who obviously limped off after about 65 minutes in the game against Albacete, and also to David Larubia, who, um, again, sad for him because he's been quite a uh, a good player this season. Uh, Chris, do you know any more on the uh, injuries to, to Victor and David Larubia? I don't. I know that Pellicer thought after the match, he said in his press conference, after the match against Albacete, that he expected that the uh, Victor injury wouldn't be that bad and he, that he was just uh, an overcharge or over movement and it wasn't that bad. But it seems to be he will be out for uh, for a bit. Yeah, I think they're talking five weeks as a as a minimum for, for Victor to... to get over his injury and obviously get back up to full fitness as well. And uh, Luke, the surprising one was David LaRubia because at the end of the Albacete game, you would have known he'd picked up a, a knock, but it sounds like he's uh, pulled his hamstring pretty badly. Uh, and he's going to be another one that joins the likes of Lebete, Kevin in the uh, the treatment room. It's quite a big loss, actually, because I've quite enjoyed LaRubia at the start this season. Yeah, it's a big loss. And I really do feel for David LaRubia, as like you've just said, he's had a, he's had a great start to the season. He looks a much better player than the David LaRubia we already had last season. But again, as you've just said, Kevin out, Julian Labete out. We started to look very, very narrow on there. God bless the signing of Romani. Yes, Romani, who could uh, definitely find himself with a starting berth against Cordoba through uh, lack of options, really, because, like I say, they're all on the uh, the medical desk at the minute. But uh, speedy recoveries to them too, and obviously to Kevin and to um, Julian Labete as well. Um, some better news to, to look at, uh, if you want to see it this way. We obviously spoke a fair bit about contracts in the last show we did, namely around Antonito, but his uh, Spanish under-19 counterpart, Isa Marino, has uh, signed new terms, fresh terms. He's uh, the captain of the Spain under-19s, still continued to get selected, despite the fact he was playing in Primera with Malaga. He signed until 2027, Chris. Uh, this is quite a good thing to get him tied down. You were quite vocal about getting players tied down to longer term deals uh, in the last show. So this is a positive, isn't it? It's a very positive. Um, but we all know that Isa Marino doesn't create the interest um, Antonito does. So I think the difference lies there a bit. We, Although we know Isa Marino is a great talent, we really have seen much of him yet at the first team of Malaga. I'm sure we're going mm. to see a lot from him, but it's not Antonito, is it? I mean, there's a bit of a difference. Still, I'm very happy that he uh, renewed his contract till 2027. Yeah, he joins a plethora of talent which have signed up to 2027, and all of them as well are, you know, Atletico Malagueño uh, players and and people who've come through our, um, you know, our cantera. So you know, it's uh, it, it's impressive to say the least, and I think. I agree with you 100%, Chris. We haven't seen the best EZ Marino yet, and there's definitely uh, a player in there. It was actually after the show we did last week where we were talking about 
you know, who does actually replace Canaro in the long term? And Luis me looks me to me like the short term fix, Luke. He's in Marino in the long term could be that centre defensive midfielder that really helps block out that space in between the um, the defence and midfield, couldn't he? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like you said, we haven't actually seen the best of Isla Moreno yet. It's been very short on game time, but to be the Spanish under-18s captain at certain times, there's pure talent there, which people from the outset can see. Um, I was reading an interview earlier with Lauren in with Radio Marca, and just interestingly then, Chris, when you said about um, Antonitos having the interest and ease and hasn't. However, Real Madrid was sniffing around and they actually offered a bit of a contract to Izan. That is why Malaga really wanted to get this one over the line. Granted, it was for Castilla or the C team and Izan Moreno, his family, his people got together and thought, no, Malaga's perfect for us right now. This is what we want to progress as a team. And for the Malaga, they really, really sold them the, the story. And, and it makes sense because he didn't have his great breakthrough yet at Malaga. Yeah. Um, mm. But the difference with Antonito is that Antonito scored the goal that got you promoted in the 122nd minute. Yeah, which is crazy. If he would done it, I don't know, because everybody, uh, everybody, thinking back to that promotion, everybody talks about the Antonito goal, but wasn't the only goal the one-one? Wasn't that more important? Everybody seems to forget about that goal. You know what I mean? I mean yeah, you've got you've got to look at like you've just said regarding Antonito from that moment. I mean, Fabrizio Romano, we're writing about Antonito. He's never he's don't write about any other Malaga players or anything like that. So, yeah. like you've just said, ever since that Tarragona goal, the I mean, for me, he is our star boy, and I really really hope that he can get the contract because when you look at it, we've for me we've got three wonder kids: Aaron Acho Maloney, Isa Moreno, Antonito. We've signed two of them down. If we can just get that last one down. Fantastic but, work from Lauren and Kike. If you ask me, for example, like Aaron Achoa Maloney, who's traveling with his country again to play minutes there with uh, with the sub 21? Uh, 19. Yeah, in the 19s. Well, well, with the sub 19s. Um, it's great. But also, Aaron Achoa Maloney isn't as far in his progress or isn't the player that Antonito already is. And also didn't have his great breakthrough yet. Yeah. I mean, we like him. But when you look at, for example, uh, Ontiveros at the time, Jack Harper, they were first squad players. And they were seen as first as big talents. And although Isa Merino and Aaron Achoa Maloney are big talents as well, they didn't have, they haven't been that important for the team yet several weeks where i say this is it you know what i mean yeah definitely i think you know you're both right on that front the the antonito thing needs to be addressed and get a contract signed out for him but i take exactly what you say chris it's now going to be 10 times harder than it was in the minutes after that tarragona game because his stock is at such an all-time high and um but it's good that the club is protecting these assets and the cantera of malaga is you know, arguably one of the one of the best in the country, and um, I can't remember if it was you or Matt on on in the, on the last show. Chris said, you know, the percentage of goals which were scored last season by Malaga Academy products shows how much weight and importance they had to our campaign last year, and and are continuing to do so as well. As we've already said, Antonito is our joint top. There, I also think that. It's good and it's great to see talents perform, but we shouldn't be build a team around uh, youth players because you cannot give uh, put all the how do you call it all the responsibility in a 17 year old. That's not fair for the 17 year old. Um, it can harm his career, and you put a lot of pressure on these kids who should play freely get some play time maybe start once in a while um but you cannot put all the pressure on them yeah but imagine imagine if they've done that with messi imagine if they did that with yeah. wayne rooney and you'd never get to see these wonder kids no but but listen when here it comes because that's different because then you're talking about real madrid barcelona if malaga mm. loses the next 12 matches 
which we all think won't happen, then um, how do you call it? We get we are bottom of the league. Yeah, the pre the pressure is higher uh, uh, at this then level. The it's much higher, and then you can really affect I people. Know. I do think when you when you look at the the transfers this summer, um, the the hierarchy, Lauren, etc. The work what they've done is there's there's quite a lot of thought to it as well. I mean, like you've just said, Chris, we don't want to put too much pressure on these young kids, but the signings of say Luis Me. Aaron Acho, Maloney and Isla Moreno can learn off, off of a, a player with great experience such as himself. Even bringing Romani back, he's not came back to be a coach of Antonito, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, but a player with Romani's experience, Antonito can learn off a player like that as well. It's like the, the kids are there, but we have got a great mix of experience and youth at the moment, probably the best we've had in a while. Here's the thing as well, because everybody's so happy with the return of Giannis Romani, who played a, a decent season for Malaga in a very difficult season in COVID where we were about to relegate. And um, when you have a team with players that don't perform as they used to perform, it's very easy to stand out. Um, but I don't have doubts about Romani. I just don't know what to expect because if you look at his... Uh, his stats from the last few seasons, he isn't that great as we all think of Romani. Well, like I say, I said it on two or three podcasts ago when when I put the tweet out regarding Romani, I had three or four Tenerife fans message back in. Obviously, we're on loan at Tenerife last year, and like one of the great quotes, what they said were headless chicken. Oh, I mean, for me, for me. Obviously, we, we're talking wingers, and I hope Hightam's not a million mile away without rushing him. Yeah. But, I mean, what a player Hightam's going to be when he comes back into the, t the team. And no, it's good to absolutely. Say, because without Romani, we would have no one the next yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think, or I hope at least that I'm wrong, I don't think Romani is the player we are all thinking he is and what we are hoping for. Well, I think we'll definitely be getting a, uh, a closer look at him uh, at the weekend, given the lack of options that we have at the minute. So just to uh, pivot the podcast to uh, previewing the game against Cordoba, um, if you don't know and you haven't listened to the podcast before, or you weren't with us last season down the well, uh, Cordoba were in our league in Primera Arefe Grupo Dos. Uh, they kind of came out of nowhere in the second half of the season, really took the fight to Castellon leapfrogged Malaga into second and finished the season really, really strongly. And um, I don't know about you boys, but I was actually quite see them go up instead of uh, Barca Bay, who they played in the playoff final. Um, so far this season, they're not looking so great. But last season, they were brilliant, weren't they, Luke? Yeah, I'll be honest. I, th I thought these were the best team in the league last season. I thought they were slightly better than Castellon. And I also think that these were the best teams to come to La Rosaleda, for sure. I mean, they played a uh, high tempo, attacking, scoring many goals. Um, yeah, very good team. Very good team in my eyes. I think they were one of the better teams. But I didn't think they were that great because if Antonito in that last minute of the of the, of the away match against Cordoba scored last season, we would have, we would have taken a draw there. Yeah, and I think that's it. They really made... They just turned the form book on its head, didn't they? They were sort of skirting around the playoffs up until Christmas and just really came out of nowhere. Obviously, great for another Andalusian club to come into Segunda. We went from having zero representation in Segunda to having nearly half the, the league is uh, Andalusian clubs. But um, I think you mentioned that season, away, Chris. Last season, oh, they good. managed the, the non-form of the rest. Um, they very because every team up there got a bit a little bit out of form uh, after Christmas, yeah, really yeah. well, and they just found a way to uh, take the max out of that situation. Yeah, I think they capitalised on the, the 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 a lot of teams plateauing around. It's why you didn't see a lot of movement in the playoffs. But obviously, you both went away to Cordoba uh, last season. Um, we were only given a handful of tickets back then uh, as well for in the uh, Estadio El Arcangel. 
Uh, Luke, you were sat in the... You were both sat in the way end, actually, weren't you? Or were you sat in the home end? I can't remember. I was sat in, like, the additional way end. The, 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 the way end. end. They made a mess. We had the, the away allocation in, say, uh, gate number three. And then they also gave us 400 tickets in, like, gate number one to totally over the the, the stand, which yeah. didn't really make sense. But, yeah, I thought we might have got a slightly bigger allocation this season. Yeah, because I was I was reading this. Obviously, this is Cordoba going back up into Segunda, but the take-up on season tickets hasn't been, say, for example, as intense as Depor or as Malaga's um, in, in that respect. Um, Chris, I know you've been absolutely scathing about the Estadio El Arcangel. Well, I don't um, want to be offensive, but I, I'm here to tell my truth. And I think I've seen a lot of stadiums in my life. <clears throat> And I can say this is by far the ugliest stadium from the outside. The ugliest stadiums I've ever seen. It's like a prison, isn't it, Chris? <clears throat> it's it's kind of a prison, an old... Um, it's an like old, half a building site. Yeah, a big, 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 big office, which looks like yeah. it's, it's straight out of Walking Dead. Because nobody take, took care of it for years. Um and it's on this random huge it's like a desert <laughs> like a desert it's weird it, the neighborhood around it the the place where we had our preview beers wasn't also really great or nice i think they put all the beauty in the city because the city is very beautiful let me say that is one of the most beautiful cities in spain game of thrones was recorded there as well a bits of it yeah yeah um, but wow, what an ugly stadium! Yeah, I suppose that's the the trade off it's got to go. You know, Cordoba being this amazing, beautiful, ancient city as well. If you do get the chance to go, if you ever visited Malaga, it's about it's about fifty minutes on the train north. If you catch the Ave to to Madrid, it does stop in Cordoba as well. But beautiful city. But I suppose you can't then <clears> sink <throat> a giant football stadium. In the middle of an ancient city, though, to be fair to Cadiz, they have they have done that. Yeah. And it works out quite well. But um, now comes the thing because from the inside, yeah, it looks better, mm -hmm. better. But you have twenty centimeters between your chair, your seat, and the seat in front of you, so you have no place to move or turn, and it's steep. As peep, <laughs> yes. it goes like this. My friend turned around to get oh, yeah, something, he fell backwards, and, and without joking, he landed, I think, 23, 24 rows uh, below us. <clears throat> Chris, didn't yeah. you guys have the uh, the incident with the aircon unit as well? With the aircon. Well, no. it just it, it was it just dripping all over that mat. No. Apparently, they're an aircon unit up, and it was just completely <laughs> leaking all over a lot of Malaga fans. But did you add? Uh, didn't you find it steep? I thought it was very steep, but I I love that. Yeah, I don't mind steepness when you have enough space to move. Yeah, but it's also very narrow, which, in my opinion, makes it a bit too dangerous. The, the cool thing about the stadium with inside the walls is it creates a fantastic atmosphere, or it did especially that day with it being a derby. Yeah, cold, like Chris, Chris, you all know as well, and I imagine it's going to be quite the same, but there wasn't just an away end of Malaga fans in, in El Arcangel. There were so many Malaga fans in the home end, scattered yeah. all around, but there were so many Malaga fans in there. And, and the stadium has a bit too much corners for me and walls. It's all a bit it is very like Lego built. Yeah, I, I was going to say that it's, it's we, kind of we like, built one it's side like and then we built together, doesn't it? Yeah. In in ten years later, we built other parts of the stadium. It's not yeah the stadium. One of the cool things about the stadium is you can get a grab bag of cheesy Doritos for two euro. Wow. If there's anything I took I from Cordoba, from it was that. Yeah. If they, well, if there's anything I can take about going into Segunda, that price has definitely gone up, Luke. So don't yeah, react to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah for this game, like I say, we had two little separate away yeah. ends um, in the last match. 
and they're fairly sizable. Um, maybe just a little bit bigger than this ticket allocation. This time round, only 520 tickets have been made available for uh, Malaga fans to be split between pennies as well, uh, which is not ideal. So, you know, you'd like to maybe think we'd be able to get more fans there if we could, especially with the close proximity and how well Malaga fans have travelled in the last 12 months. But... Uh, we shall see how many the actually do thing, next uh, week. Thing, sorry. The interesting thing as well is the friendships between the two clubs. I mean, I know you guys follow a hell lot of Malaga fans on socials and so on, and the Malaga fans were quite literally celebrating the fact Cordoba got promoted. So you'd think yeah, well, we'd look yeah, after each other. There's a mutual respect there, isn't there? Yeah. There's, a, there's a massive respect between the fans. And, um, you you know, and, and I... I, I of, say uh, again? You, you you guys watched the final Barcelona against um, Cordoba. Yeah, it was very poor. Yes. Very. The second one, I thought, please let Barcelona win, and I'm totally against B teams. But Chris, oh, Cordoba, man, I, was, I was all over that. Man. I was like, Cordoba's <laughs> got to go up with us, and that's the only way I wanted it. But um, or that or Pon. Pomferadino, uh, that would have been quite nice. But um, but yeah, well, for, for this one, as we usually do, uh, Alex Fitzpatrick of Spanish Segunda Show fame. If you uh, want to learn anything more about the Spanish Segunda, him and Liam go through all the matches on a Monday, uh, all the results, and give you a full uh, bit of analysis on those games. For us, it gives us a lovely little preview because obviously we don't get to watch every quarter of a match. So here is Alex and, Fitzpatrick and, just giving us a little preview we are on the sports 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 social hup, hup. Uh, <laughs> they are sports. they are part of the sports social podcast network as well now an ever-growing family so uh yeah may maybe maybe someone on this podcast maybe tip them off but uh i'm sure i'm sure the uh will be a great growing spanish contingent as well to the sports social podcast network which is always great to see but uh, yes here is alex fitzpatrick with a little breakdown of cordoba season so far Malaga make the short trip to Cordoba this weekend and last week I said it probably wasn't a great time to play Albacete but that one worked out well in the end for Malaga. This week it's almost certainly a good time to be playing Cordoba. They have no wins and just one draw from their first three games of the season and come into this one on the end of a Pretty heavy, convincing defeat by Elche on Monday night away from home. Uh, Adrian La Peña will be coming back from suspension. He was sent off in match day two, so missed that Monday night game and seems likely to slot back into defence. Of course, you'll probably be familiar with one particular face playing for Cordoba, and that's Genaro who has been with Malaga previously for, for the last few years. He has been starting for them in central midfield and, and seems likely to feature. Although in terms of the team selection, all bets are off really because the results haven't been great. The squad might see some changes. So the 11 might see some changes from the squad with uh, players sitting on the bench ready to come in and impress. Players to look out for, Jacobo Gonzalez, he will play, uh, well he can play in any of the positions behind the front man on either wing or in the number 10 position, a very tricky dribbler with a uh, with a good shot on him. Antonio Casas, he uh, seems at the moment to be the pick up front, although Oblos Obloski, who was with Ibiza uh, last year, one of the top scorers in Primera Federación, he has joined Cordoba in the summer. And there'll also be a familiar name, uh, another Zidane. Of course, there's a Zidane in goal at Granada, and there's another Zidane in uh, midfield, a little bit more like his father, playing a little bit more in that sort of number 10 creative position. He might come into the 11 uh, if they make changes. If not, you'll likely see him off the bench. Theo Zidane, um, look out for him. Another one off the Zidane production line. That's Cordoba against Granada this weekend. And thank you, Mr. Alex Fitzpatrick, once more. And again, I reiterate, if you want to find out more about the Spanish Segunda in its entirety, go and tune into the Spanish Segunda show. It is a really great listen, uh, as always. Um, 
interesting to hear about Cordoba. As we were saying just before we heard from Alex Fitzpatrick, they were, you know, very much a form side last season, you know, took Castellon to uh to, to the fight and, and really chased them down. I think Castellon only went up by six points in the end, which was a massive surprise considering they had something like a 15 point lead at one point. Um it's strange that they are sat bottom of the league at the minute. I thought they would do a lot better in Segunda. And another fact that Alex shared with me over text message whilst uh, we were talking about this voice clip, uh, he said in the last two match days, the entire starting 11 of Cordoba and the bench, none of them had played in the last season. Um, so, you know, for two last match days, they purely had players who played in Primera or lower now competing in Segunda, which I think shows the lack of experience in this squad for this level, doesn't it, Luke? Yeah, it does. Um, I, I watched them at home to Burgos, where they drew 2-2. They, they went down to 10 men and they were a little bit unlucky. Uh, Miranda's away, they got beat 1-0. And again, Cordoba were by far the better team, just couldn't put the ball in the net. I mean, look, guys, it's very early still, isn't it? it we're only three games in. Effectively, I feel we've started off great, but if we get beat at the weekend, we also look mid table. If Cordoba get their three points, they rise. Um, but I am very surprised to see him down there at the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, does it surprise you as well, Chris? Or do you think sometimes, you know, we've seen it with Alcocon, we've seen it with Amor Bieta, teams who haven't been at this level for a long time or, or, or for certainly a, a period of time? They, they do tend to find it hard to uh, fit back in, don't they? I think everything is different in Primera RF compared to Segunda. It's much quicker and you have to play smart. And you have to need that intelligence to play smart. And if you don't have that experience, it's very hard to win games or to play good matches. We know Genaro has the experience to play uh, in Segunda. Maybe not the best experience, but he has experience. It's just very different. Uh, everything is different. I think that is one of the of the big reasons behind this. People always try to scare, and I, I, I was listening to what Alex said. People always try to scare with the name of Sidan. We played against a few Sidans already. Um, it doesn't really scare me. I mean, how, ma how many how many players have sons in football which turned out to be better than, than the actual thing? When he said he's like his dad, I hope he's bald and that's about all. I, I don't... Well, th this is the difference of this Zidane as well, isn't it? Because this Zidane was playing for Castilla last year and he's only ever known playing for either for Real Madrid, say, or for their, their Bay team. So he's kind of finding his feet a little bit, whereas the other one who's gone to, you know, Granada has established himself as a great Segunda goalkeeper where they are, and obviously is now, well, it's not going too well for Granada, but, um, you know, getting a big move to a big club like that was worked wonders for him. If, if um, he was that good, he wouldn't be playing for Cordoba this season. Yeah. I mean, it's just like every other son of famous footballers, they're always cheap AliExpress versions of their dead. Yeah, you've got to get your chance. And I think, to be fair, last season we we said about these players who'd stuck around at Castilla for a long time, and he was one of them that we'd said, you know, you've got over 100 appearances for a B team, get out there and do something else. But, like, look at Nico Paz, for example. He's gone from Castilla to Como. So the, the, there are players making uh, that jump uh, out there. Um, I think for me with this one, with Cordoba, is as you said, Luke, that, you know, they are sat rock, rock bottom now, but they need to find a way to score goals. You know, keeping the ball and having possession is brilliant for them to do. And they look good while doing it. And they've got a great kit and they've got, you know, an OK looking stadium. But you've got to get results out in, in this. And this is where maybe the manager who was, you know, so positive last season maybe needs to take a bit of a step back and say, well, actually, I might need to be a bit more pragmatic with how I play football this season. And that's when I can get results. Um, in terms of players to watch out for, I know Chris um, and, and Alex and yourself have just mentioned some there. Canaro is the big name so far and not going too swimmingly for him at the minute in Cordoba. He's not been 
embraced as much as we would have thought he would have been. Um, Luke, he's but, kind of been chastised online, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think somebody put in the WhatsApp group yesterday regarding a couple of tweets what had been sent uh, describing Canaro. And I thought, come on, three games in, <laughs> you're turning your back. You just think what Canaro did for us, effectively, one of the main reasons we got relegated from Segunda for his actions against Racing, the red card. However, mm. then the resurgence of Gerardo last season, for me, one of our best players, a leader on and off the pitch. Um, I'd, I'd like to see Gerardo do do well, not, not on Saturday. I'd love for him to get sent off after about two and a half minutes. <laughs> but um, I, I do wish him a good season because there is a player in there. It says a lot of about the transfer window of Cordoba, doesn't it? When your big name is a defensive midfielder. See, I, I don't know about you guys. Were you guys quite surprised that Gerardo got the move to Cordoba? Like, no. I, I, to be fair, I expected Gerardo to see Primera, if anything. Um, no, to be fair, I, I, I actually thought it was a surprise that we didn't keep him. Yeah, I, thought, I, I do given, agree with that. Given how he played last season and given the redemption that he had on the previous season, I thought he'd still have a job to do, if I'm being perfectly honest. So it was a surprise to see him go. To Cordoba, I think, is a good fit for him as well because it's, it's a team where he can go in and be a leader instantly, you know, not you know, not being that little fish in a big pond. Um, because he's still got age on his side as well. He's not an old yeah, player, yeah. you know what I mean? So he's still got that going for him. Um, but he also is a very limited player with a lot of defaults. He, yeah, he, sure. he does, yeah, definitely. And maybe without that position without consistency. Yeah. So, I don't know if you guys can agree. I mean, we all saw the socials last year. The, the, I think the big part of Renato is what he did off the field as well, like in the changing rooms, like a real mm. leader of our younger players, brought the team together. I mean, to, just sorry, just jumping into Malaga, we, we yeah, effectively lost all our leaders, didn't we, this summer? But but that's easy when you have a, have a team and everything goes fine, like Malaga last season. Because Gennaro is also a player who was captain when Malaga relegated to 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 Primera de FF. Yeah, I th and I think as well, he's he's there's no two doubts about it. He's a, he's just probably a quite a good bloke to have around more than anything. Yeah. But that's the Cordoba's advantage. And as Alex was saying, they haven't got that experience, and he's probably one of the few players that actually does have experience of playing this level, limited as it may be. But there was at one point when we were we were all thought he was a great Segunda player, and then what happened happened. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how he does get on this season, and whether we can get the Cordoba fans back around side. But um, aside from him and Zidane and uh, Antonio Casas is the one for me. He was quite yeah. uh, okay. a handful for for Cordoba last season. He signed a lot of players from uh, Primera, you know, sort of like the top players, which I, I kind of wanted Malaga to do a little bit as well, saying, "Well, we've been down there, we've seen who's good, we've seen who's bad." Let's see if we can get the cream of the crop. So they've brought in a lot of players with the potential for a lot of change as well, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, one why I'm very, very intrigued, mainly for my Tottenham roots, is the youngster Jude Sonsupe Bell. So to you guys, you probably never hear this guy is just some young kid, but effectively, I'm sure he's 20 years old, he's an English kid. But Tottenham really like went out of their way to steal him from Chelsea over yeah, yeah. two years ago. Chelsea's great academy, like we know about. Last year, Tottenham's under 21s won the league. It, with ease, I think lost two games, and this kid were were one of the stars of that. Um, I'm not saying he would have got into the Tottenham first team, but this season, if anything, as a Tottenham fan, you're thinking he may make that progression to like the bench. And then next thing, he turns up in Cordoba, like completely out of the blue. Um, but I mean, we have seen these British youngsters move abroad and it not really work out. But it really, really intrigues me this one. See how it goes on. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I'm I'm quite excited to see him, but I'm also very excited to see Charlie Patino at, at Depot yeah. as well, yeah. which I think will be quite fun. But that's for a different preview show. But I also uh, think, because, let's be honest, the Chelsea's, the Real Madrid's, the Barcelona's, the Manchester City's, the United's, sign about how many kids do they sign a season? 100? Oh, well, Chelsea definitely. They've got 100 players in their first team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so, an ongoing joke at the know, minute. It's only a very small part to get to the first team of Chelsea. Mm. I think so, it's brave of him. Well, not brave is not the right move. A great move for his career because to stand yeah. out between 100 kids is way more difficult than stand out 
between 18 other players. Yeah, I'm honest. I'm I'm, I'm excited for him, and I, I really do hope it goes well. Not yeah, too well. Not too it's well. Especially not, not Saturday. This Saturday. <laughs> not Saturday night. <laughs> So in terms of looking ahead for what Malaga are going to do this weekend, because we've spoken a lot about Cordoba, obviously last weekend was just brilliant in terms of the result. We are definitely going to have a few enforced changes, one of them namely being uh, at centre-back. Alex Pastor is going to be uh, suspended for this game. Victor Garcia, as we said, is now out injured. David LaRubia is now out injured. So we're looking at at least three amendments to the starting lineup. So, you know, Chris, you're Sergio Pace there. You're putting your Pace there hat on. Uh, who do you go for on, on Saturday? Who do you bring in and give a chance? Alfonso Herrero at the back. Mm-hmm. He picks himself now, doesn't he? Yeah, come on. <laughs> um, and I would go for the Einar Monte combination at the centre backs. Uh, yeah, and then. Well, then you make it very difficult. Puga. And Puga, yeah. Uh, I like Puga this season. Puga and... Would you fancy Hakeem at left-back? over Dan I Sanchez was just or... about to ask this. Would you Would go you for a bit more the same? I don't know. Danny Sanchez gives you a lot of... a lot of commitment. And I energy. like Danny Sanchez. I do he like that. for every ball. Yeah. I would go with Danny Sanchez. Because it's a, it's a derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he, he, he bleeds Malaga, doesn't he? He, he bleeds yeah. it. Do you then bring in uh, Luis Me for a full starting yeah. berth on, on this one as well? We start if, Luis it, yes. Yeah, definitely. So you have Luis Me, and then you have the midfielders, which are a bit difficult, isn't it? Because you have Luis Me, Manu Molina. Mm-hmm. I think they're Luis. perfect for each other as well. Yeah, yeah. Luis, yeah. experience. Those are there for sure. But then, then it's get it's getting quite difficult, isn't it? You play Roman. Yeah, I think I think uh, ahead of those two, you've only really got the two options nowadays, which is either Daniel Lorenzo or um, Aaron Atromaloni, especially with Larubia being uh, out injured. So I think you could. F- f- for me, you could flip a coin on that one. To be perfectly honest, it could interchange halfway through. I do um, think in a game like this, in a bit of a derby, if you can put a centre three of Manu Molina, Luis Me, and Danny Lorenzo, I think they all yeah. combat one another really well. Look really good. And Chris is right. It's up top where it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, I'm, it's like, do, I you mean, put, do we go? Do, do we keep the goal machine that is Dioni up top for yeah, the time? Dione. For me, yeah. I think he deserves it. I think it depends. It, 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 it depends a bit. If you play this style that you have been playing the whole season. You have to play the only, but if you're yeah. going to play the only from the side or play the only differently, I don't know. This this would be my one concern actually at the minute in terms of how I, th- I think to be fair on the back of the last game, Antonito has got the left wing position locked down. No two doubts about it. Yeah. As you said last week, Chris, is it too soon for Romani to start for Malaga given that he's not really had much of a preseason? He's not really played uh, in Abar's warm-up games. He's only been in around the club for a week. It makes me nervous to think that maybe Pace would take Dione out of that central position, put him out on the right in favour of a Rocco or a Castell, for example. But Castell won't play, I think, because he wasn't training today. No, he, so, uh, Castell and Musa missed train or didn't train with yeah. the team. Yeah, I do okay. think the, the overall fitness of these guys is is. We're probably not going to know until seven o'clock come Saturday night. Like you're saying there, Louise May starts every day of the week. If fit, he's not had a pre-season. He came on for what were it last week? 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Yeah, um, they're, they're we we don't know where obviously High Tam's not going to be starting, but we don't really know where he is. Remani's not had a pre-season. We don't know where he is. Castell, is he good? Is he fit enough? What do you for? think of Castell? I I thought he did well. Without doing too much, I just the the it, to be fair though, coming on for your debut when you've got ten men. But uh, what did you think about his form? You are sorry. What did you think about his form? I, I thought he looked all right. Really? Yeah, I don't think we would have seen the best of any player in that situation. I think when you're up against ten men, 
you have to run in Holland we say your balls out of your pants um, that sounds very Dutch <laughs> yeah but if you have to work like very hard go for every ball get try to get every ball and he lacked that a lot I think you, you, you do you do to a degree. I don't know if it would have been an instruction from Sergio, but like when, just for example, when I've played against 10 men, you've also got to like conserve that energy for if you, if you, I don't know, break on the counter or something. But yeah, I yeah. mean, the secondary to that, like with Rocco, granted, we haven't played the way Rocco plays, I believe. I'm not too impressed with him so far. Yeah. I think Rocco is what they call a pinch hitter, right? I think uh, the big thing for Malaga is that in that central striking role, Roberto did so much that was outside of his remit, outside yeah. of what he was actually supposed to do as a central striker. That really you're seeing, you're not seeing that as much this year from from any of them. And Leone's doing actually really, really well to to carve himself out a, kind of a new position for him in the team. And he's kind of come in and said, actually, I'll step up and I'll do quite well this season. And that goal against Albacete, Jesus yeah, Christ. Brilliant. Like say, absolutely. You're talking fantastic. about a player who had 20 goals per season in Primera RFF. You know yeah, I mean? but this, this is a strange thing, isn't it? You know, like you say, everything about it, from what we saw last season, his age, what we know about, he knows about eating sandwiches, <laughs> would suggest to me that he's not going to score 20, but at the minute he, he looks... You never know. ...which is great. So I think, the most, I think the most important thing regarding whichever one of these three strikers it is, we need bodies around him. We can't, yeah. I mean, they say for the Miranda's game at home, we had our first shot on target was the goal, 75 minutes or whatever it was. We need bodies around them to, I, I don't expect Rocco to, I, to be running. I want to see because I think Rocco, as Rocco and Costello are a bit the same, yeah, kind of, of, of strikers. And I wish to have a striker edit as well with a lot of pace. A striker, yeah. that will, if, that if we had a, little, yeah. a small, nippy striker, I think. Yeah. It's like uh, a Lago Junior who's very quick and and we don't have that. For me though, the 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 like I say regarding players getting close, I think we've got all the tools around it, i.e. the Antonitos, whoever's on the right, the left Kevins, Dav uh, I mean Danny Lorenzo scored some very important goals last season, didn't he? Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'm also I'm gonna be honest, I'm also not a, very impressed with uh with Danny Lorenzo this season. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's done anything too amazing, if you know what I mean. We've had a great start, but in terms of performance-wise, as perform yes, yeah, Saturday were an amazing, passionate, passionate performance. But we wasn't great in Feral. We wasn't. We really wasn't good against Mirandes. Saturday was a big, big win in my eyes, though. Something to build on. I think that's also the dangerous part because going to Cordoba, which yeah. is dirty. So the Cordoba players will be more motivated. Uh, the fans will be more motivated of Cordoba. They really need the points. Malaga doesn't. I think the dangerous thing is that Malaga is going to Cordoba, seeing their bottom of the league and going with too much confidence. Yeah, that was going to be my next question, really. In sort of how confident are you about picking three points up on Saturday? Is this going to be the walk in the park that everything would suggest it was? But as Luke just said, we've not, we are where we are without appearing too convincing at the minute. Um, so I think this will be a tough game. And I think they'll look at the fact that we are a fellow promoted club and think this is a good opportunity, as you say, Chris, to get three points on the board. Yeah, everybody's talking that we are on, on, on promotion spots or on playoff spots and we're top of the league. But we're only three matches in. If you lose next week, you can be at the bottom. You can yeah, be in red really. Well, we've only got those five points and we're fifth. And like you said before, Luke, if Cordoba win here, the two points behind us and all of a sudden the, the, the tables are reversed. But... I'm fairly certain that from what I've seen, as long as we stick to what we know and how we've played, especially in the last game, then we should be on to something that should be quite good. Um, so we'll start to to wrap up there. Like I say, it sounds like we're quite confident. Looking forward to this game. Uh, something we are looking forward to is the return of the live stream. Uh, so we've had a bit of a hiatus because uh, we've all been on holidays and moving house and things like that. 
So the live streams are back. It's obviously quite good as well because it's not as easy to watch uh, Spanish Segunda football this season unless you're willing to sit on your phone with a little Bet365 screen. Um, so we'll look forward to bringing you that at um, ten quarter to nine Spanish time, quarter to eight um, English time on, on that front. Guys, you're looking forward to the first live stream of the season? You remember when we were joining the Sports Social Podcast Network? Did I say it right? Yeah, yep. that's the one. Yeah. Right. It's the first time. Um, they asked us what kind of publicity we didn't want. And we all agreed that we didn't want any betting platforms. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't want to do any uh, publicity for betting platforms. And now we love it. <laughs> We've got it, to. <laughs> it took Nick Bell less than a year <laughs> to make publicity for a betting network. <laughs> I, I, I'm going down the route of that. Is that's the, the one way I know I can watch it with a good with a good stream, without going down against Javier Tabus's, uh piracy route or uh, <laughs> IPT TV route. So I'm 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 staying good and just sticking with the one sin. Um, but it should be like I say, it should be quite fun to have us all back on talking about the football. It like I say, it's not a a minute by minute commentary. We 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 do offer some. Um, level of, of commentary but it's just a good chat amongst Malaga fans to talk about things going on in the game and there's no better game to start with as you said Chris like a derby match so keep your eye on our social medias uh, for that being announced for this Saturday uh, and I suppose the last thing to say to you guys is thank you very much for joining me uh, Luke from Doncaster thank you very much for joining us tonight Thank you very much, mate. Um, I will be going to work tonight, working the night shift, but I'll have that lovely view of Chris Marquez sat on his balcony in the Costa del Sol with the sunshine. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to aren't Chris Marquez we... from the balcony uh, with that beautiful view. Aren't we We're supposed to uh, end, end with the Kevin news? Or the thing with, which happened to Kevin? Oh, with the with the shirt. Sorry, it's not on my uh, agenda here, but worth it is worth mentioning that I think I don't know the full story of this. And well, now, guys, remember, and now, half of our about half of our uh, fan base was very very big on AliExpress and DHK. These are all going to be messaging Kevin after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is this is where I'm coming from it as a as a football shirt sh football shirt purist, and obviously as a. The, the, the big Malaga shirt collection that I've got. Do we reward people for buying shirts off AliExpress and DHA? Well, <laughs> this is really we this, should this, not. But... Because this is the thing of the debate, and this is because I and and I think we're all at the gear because uh, we're very much are very much against fake shirts, and I still am because it's not helping the club. You have a fake shirt, which also I don't know, uh, doesn't look the same. You see the difference. And uh, many times it can, it takes down the value uh, of shirts for people who buy the shirts. And of course you have the risk of when you are uh, a person who uh, collects shirts, like Nick does with Malaga shirts, you have, it's, you have the, uh, you have the possibility to buy a shirt for a lot of money, which is fake. Mm -hmm. I've had my fingers burnt twice before. So I would never buy a Malaga shirt, which is fake. Um, yeah. And I was pretty much against it. Now, when you read the story and the guy posts, uh, is very proud putting on Twitter a, uh, a picture of a Malaga shirt and how proud he is, proud he is of having it and how he says how great it looks and how happy is it, he is with it and people respond on underneath in the comments uh, saying horrible things and making fun of him and um telling there's only one comment <laughs> <ugly things. laughs> <To me. laughs> no, um, i mean i would never post anything a, a negative no. comment under underneath anybody's tweets um because I don't really know the person, and there's a story behind it. But he got a lot of negative reactions, and then he posted that he didn't have the money to buy a Malaga shirt. That changes yeah. it, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, and I think that's a bit that that's a big driver around the conversation. Uh, and I say it jokingly, like as a football shirt collector and things like that, and everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But ultimately. 
for example, when I went into the Malaga shop whilst I was there last month and I bought uh, myself a home shirt, the new one, the anniversary shirt, and I also got Ruby, you know, little girl shirt there, 66 euros for a kid's shirt. Yeah. No number printing, anything like that. Seven euros for adult shirts. It is expensive nowadays. It is beyond stupidly expensive. I remember when you used to get a new shirt for 40 quid, and that was expensive back then. Yeah. So when you get that story, you're absolutely right, Chris. You know, and, and what Kevin's done on the back of it to reach out online and say, Come to the stadium, I'll give you a proper one. Uh, one of mine. I'll give you it, one of my kids. Yeah, it's a beautiful story, isn't it? And makes you fall in with makes you fall in love with Kevin a little bit more. No, but you can think of Kevin what you want on the pitch about his football. But yeah, you, you can't deny that he is he is a great person in real life, and mm. uh, I think he changed a lot during the past two seasons when he was in Portugal. He came back like a, like an adult, and um, yeah, very nice guy. And I think that's more important than how good you play football. I've got a vision of Matt Harrison running down the Marbella Patio tomorrow, listening to this podcast, and he's just gazing <laughs> at the stars. I was like, oh, Kevin. <laughs> you, Kevin gave, you gave without <laughs> <laughs> Thank you away, oh, Kevin. No. But a wonderful, a wonderful story nonetheless, and I hope the, uh, the, the chap involved loves his new... Uh, Kevin Medina shirts and gets to wear it pride like we all do with the the, the Malaga badge. Um, but yeah, that's probably us wrapped up for this week. Uh, like I say, keep your out for the live stream. Go and like us on all various social media platforms Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X. Uh, subscribe to us on Spotify. Give us a rating. It always helps to spread the message, which is also cool. And go follow us on YouTube if you want to watch back any of our other previous episodes or subscribe any of the YouTube. Episodes. That's important. We need subscribers. Subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube. Click, click, uh, click, click, all... click. It's free. Click. Yeah. We're, we're, we're into the hundreds now, which is great news. And we'll, we'll get one of those little plaques one day when, when Malaga win La Liga, potentially. But um, uh, I, mean, yeah. I think we need the Champions League for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. We may, may, maybe one day. Uh, so we said goodbye to Luke. Thanks very much for joining us. I hope you enjoy your night at work. Chris, goodbye to yourself from your wonderful view in Spain. And Luke, thank you. Luke. Take a look. Oh. I'll stand up for you. No, give over. Give over. I don't You're want to see him. you. Now. You're hurting him. Uh, and most importantly, thank you to you guys at home for listening to us as well. You've been absolutely brilliant. I've been Nick Bell. And as always, siempre vamos Malaga. Adios. We'll see you next vamos. time.